Welcome to Ketuvan Academy. In this video, our expert will be discussing about Azure Synapse Analytics, unpacking its core components and functionalities from data storage to transformation and processing. Synapse Analytics streamlined your data engineering workflow. Join us as we discuss its key features and customization options empower you to maximize your data capabilities. Also, stay till the end for the free class video. If you want a high-paying job in Azure Cloud, by our very own Atul Kumar. Let's get started. All right. So let's let's talk about uh, Azure Synapse Analytics. As I told you, Synapse Analytics by itself is a very very huge concept. Let's understand what does it encapsulate. See, let's say your data you're saving it inside a container inside your blog. Let's say you have a blog container. This is acting as your data uh, storage, right? Now, the data that you have saved over here, assume that it is raw data. You are going to go ahead and bring it into another service or another tool where you would be transforming your data. Or you would be, let's say, processing your data. There could be lots of tools that you're using for this purpose. You could use Databricks, you could use Azure Data Factory, you could use Spark Pool. There are multiple ways for you to go ahead and do that, right? Once you have processed your data, you have cleaned your data, you then will go ahead and save it in some, way, uh, in some particular sink. So you would dump it in the destination or the sink. Now, these are all different, different services on Azure plat platform, right? So for you to access or for your transforming tool to go ahead and access your storage resource, you need to authenticate it, correct? For you to go ahead and access this particular sync, you need to authenticate it because they're all different, different branches of the same platform. Now, we are going to talk about one particular platform or one particular service on Azure, which lets you encapsulate all your requirements in just one umbrella. And that is nothing but your Synapse Analytics. Okay, so Synapse Analytics is your one stop solution for the entire transformation that you want to do. Now, do you want to use Synapse Analytics for every job that you do? Or would you prefer to authenticate yourself and use it individually? That is your choice. Let's understand about Synapse Analytics. Let's understand about what all are the various services that it provides us before we get started. So if I had to technically define about Azure Synapse Analytics, this would be that one platform where all the tools which are required to perform data engineering are available in one single roof, which makes the integration of these tools very, very easy in terms of authenticating them to use each other. Right? So if I had to just put down a one statement on this, I would say Azure. Synapse Analytics provides us with a platform where all the data engineering tools are available under one single roof. And what is it going to help us with? Easy integration, easy authentication between the each other. Right now, what are the various when I say, you know, all the various tools of data engineering are all encapsulated or brought under one single roof? What do I mean by that? So let's understand the various tools that come into picture over here. All right. So getting back to the, our visual representation. So assume that okay, let me put that out. Assume that. This is my Synapse Analytics workspace. OK. Now, when you create Synapse Analytics, at that instinct, there are certain tools that you get as complementary. 
which means you are going to have inbuilt certain tools which you are not even going to ask for it is going to give you those tools by default okay let's discuss about them first the first one that it is going to give you by default is nothing but what we discussed already adls gen 2 container azure data lake storage container which means you don't have to go anywhere outside to save your data you have the facility for saving your data right inside your synapse analytics work workspace right so this is something that you get as an inbuilt feature as a complementary feature when you create your synapse analytics okay so i am putting it in green now let's have a look at the color code which i would be using here i'm putting it in green because this is something that you are going to get by default let me put that color code over here as well so first of all we have green and then i'm going to use red also this would be something that you have to custom create this is not something that will be there by default you will have to custom create that and on the other hand there is something which you will be getting by default or inbuilt so we will see what those features are this is inbuilt and then you have the ones that you will have to custom create okay so this is the first um tool or service that you have over here the second one is apache spark tool and this is something that needs to be custom created now what is apache spark tool so apache spark this is basically very, very similar to your Azure Databricks. Okay, so I will put that symbol over here. Uh, although it is not a replacement of your Databricks, this is similar to your Databricks. As we go ahead, we'll understand what is Databricks and why I'm calling it similar to Databricks. The major usage of your Apache Spark pool is for transformation. So you have a storage container here then you will have to pull the data and then you have to transform the data how are you going to transform you need a compute resource for transformation right something which will allow you to apply logic on the data only when you're able to apply logic on the data you will be able to go ahead and you know um, process the data clean the data transform the data now for doing that you will use apache spark tool and who is going to support you in this process so your your logic your implementation of the processing or the business logic that you want to do you will do it in apache spark pool with the help of spark notebooks okay now what do i mean by this see let's say uh, you are a programmer and you write down the code okay for you to write down the code you need a console which is where you will write down the code right and then you will have an engine that helps you execute your program. Now, that engine which allows you to execute your program is Apache Spark Tool. And your console where you write down the actual program is your Spark Notebook. Okay. In this case, what are the various languages that you can use to write down your um, code? It could be Scala, it could be Python, you can use SQL also. You can use C sharp as well. And you can use R programming too. So you have multiple choice which you can use in order to go ahead and write down your code inside your Spark notebook. You will connect the Spark notebook to your engine. I'm calling it as an engine, but it is nothing but your Apache Spark code. So I'm sorry, you'll connect it with this. And once that is done, you will then execute the code right the third one is an inbuilt one and this is serverless sql pool serverless sql pool okay this is in green which means it is something that you are going to get even without asking for it now what is serverless sql pool going to be used for you can use this also as a compute resource where you will be able to go ahead and apply logic on your data in order to go ahead and transform the data. And obviously, as the name suggests here, it is going to be only SQL that you would be using in order to apply the transformation. Now, see, this is an inbuilt one. Anything that you get as an inbuilt feature, can you demand for the configuration of that? No, 
it's something that you're getting like a complimentary no so when you get something like that you will not be able to demand for the configuration you will not be able to go ahead and expect uh you know expect high performance out of that right now what if there is data what if, what if there is huge volume of data that you need to process what if you need high reliability uh, in terms of the engine that is going to process the data will it be sufficient enough that's a big question because it is something that is inbuilt it's a shared resource it is going to depend only on the availability of that particular resource and hence as an alternate you have this inbuilt tool which you can create see when, you see when it is something that you custom create you are the owner of it you have complete control on that resource you can demand that hey i'm paying for this and then i want to go ahead and make sure that this is the performance of it and you will be provided that right so as an alternate of this serverless sql pool you have dedicated sql pool yeah i will mention the similarity between them we have not yet arrived to the service which is similar to your azure data factory okay so this is your dedicated SQL pool, which is something that you can custom create. It is the same as your data warehouse. It provides you with both storage as well as compute. And hence, it is very same to your data warehouse. Let me put that point over here as well. Dedicated SQL pool is very, very similar to your SQL data warehouse. And what is it that is going to help you execute the logic in this particular resource? Very obvious because it is dedicated SQL pool. The language that you can use in order to execute your logic is nothing but your SQL script. Okay, it's only SQL that will allow you to go ahead and interact with your dedicated SQL pool. Right? Now, uh, yes, see guys, this is only the introduction. As we go ahead, Apache Spark Pool will be one module that we will be covering. Serverless SQL Pool will be another module that we'll be covering. Dedicated SQL Pool will be another module that we'll be covering, right? And the last service, which is a part of your uh, Synapse workspace, is nothing but the one that is very similar to your Azure Data Factory. And this is something that you would be custom creating, which is your Azure Synapse. Azure Synapse Pipelines. You can call it as code-free pipelines or Azure Synapse Pipeline. And this is something that is very similar to your Azure Data Factory. In fact, Azure Synapse Pipelines is something that was evolved out of Azure Data Factory. All right, guys. So I hope the architecture is clear, right? So individually, of course, we would be going through each of them one by one. But as of now, I want you all to understand what are the various uh, resources, which of them are inbuilt, which of them are custom created. Hey there, if you're enjoying this video and would like to go deeper and become an expert and master on data engineering, on Microsoft Azure Cloud in order to get a high paying job, then I would like to invite you for a free class that, that I'm doing where I'm bringing a Microsoft certified trainer and a data expert. We'll be talking everything about Microsoft Azure Cloud, how to learn in this in depth, including everything related to both certification as well as in order to get a high paying job. We'll be talking about 12 week roadmap and all the hands on labs you should be performing. So if you're interested, check out on ketonacademy.com forward slash Azure Data 02.